This video will demonstrate how floating point addition works and also some of the pitfalls of this operation. We're going to take two numbers, 0 0.6 in decimal and 0 0.1 in decimal and add them. Now we know the result should be 0 0.7, but it won't be. The reason for that is that 0 0.6 in decimal actually has an infinite repeating representation as a binary fraction. Its representation is 0 0.10011001011 and so on forever. Of course, our floating point representation can only hold a finite number of bits, and so we will need to round to store that number. 0 0.1 also has an infinite representation, so it will also be rounded when it is stored as a floating point number. The result is that adding these rounded versions of these numbers will produce a result with a slight error in it. So let's convert these numbers to floating point numbers. We need 32 bits. We will refer to 0 0.6 with the variable y in the calculation which we'll eventually carry out below. first bit is 0 because this is a positive value. And then we have 8 bits for the biased exponent. Now remember that we must store this number in normalized form. That means we'll have to move this decimal 1 to the right so that the number will start with a 1. So our exponent is negative 1. And we will store this information separately. So y has an exponent of negative 1. Since this value is biased, we need to add 127 to this to get 126, which is the value we will store as our biased exponent. So we'll have negative 1 plus 126 sorry, 127, to get a value of 126, which is stored here. And the binary representation for 126 is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, then 0. Now, the significand, which we'll represent with y sub s, is the bits to the right of the first one, repeating, but then rounded at the end. So let's fill this with 23 bits. 1, 2, 3. That's that first sequence. And then we repeat from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then what would happen is we'd have a 1 here, and then beyond that we don't care. But this will actually change our result. Because there's a 1 here, we round up. That means this 1 becomes a 0, and we put a 1 in this position. So the final bits here are a 1 and a 0, just in case that's unclear, due to rounding. We also need to, let's go ahead and write these bits for y, s, um, or rather, y, s will be one point, and then that sequence. We'll repeat this process for 0 0.1, which we're denoting as x, this is also a positive value, and we will need to move this point over one, two, three, four positions to push this one to the left of the binary point. And since our exponent here will be negative four, that means that if we have negative four plus one, twenty-seven, we will have a biased exponent of 123. 
which you would represent using 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is 123 in binary. And then we need to figure out the significant. And that is simply all the bits that are to the right of this first one. So we will have one, which is that one there. And then we repeat starting with 0, 0, 1, 1. So 0, 0, 1, 1. And ultimately, we want to have 23 bits here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Ah, but 24, if it were there, would be a 1. So it also rounds up, and this 0 is actually a 1. So a 1 is in that position. So we already have two changes to the numbers as a result of rounding. So you can see how this would affect the final result we get. The significant of that number is therefore, so given these components of the floating representations of these numbers, we can fill out a formula to find out what the final result will be. In general, if we want to add x and y, then we will compute that as the significant of x times 2 raised to x's exponent minus y's exponent plus y, y significant times 2 raised to y's exponent. And there's a caveat here. We have to order these elements or choose the variables such that x's exponent is less than or equal to y's exponent. So the reason I assigned x and y to these particular variables is that 0 0.1 has a smaller exponent, negative 4, compared to 0 0.6, whose exponent is minus 1. So the idea here is that we want to shift the value that is smaller so that it will have a decimal point in the same place as the value with the higher exponent. Once we've done that, we can add those values, and the exponent of the result will be the same as the exponent for whichever one was largest in the first place. Now, as I fill in these values, you can see what I mean. We have xs times, this is going to be minus 4 minus negative 1, therefore it is 2 to negative 3 plus y's significant times 2 raised to the negative 1. Now, to add this value and this value, I'll need to shift over xs. So this is 2 to the negative 3. That means this binary point will need move three spaces to the left. So this will equal a 0 0.00, and then starting from here. So notice that if I move this point back over by 3, I will have the original significant of x. I'm adding to this y is significant, and I want them to be aligned. So this is y significant. So the 1 and the binary point will go there. And then I'll have, and then I have three spots at the end that are missing because I shifted this value over. 
Now, of course, we've had this zeros, and then we can perform the addition. And this result will be multiplied by 2 to the negative 1. So now that we've aligned these binary numbers, we can add them, and the result will be 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And then things get interesting. We have 0, and 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. These add 2, that's 3, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. That's 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. We have another 0 there. 1, 1, 1, and then a 0, and then a 1, and there's the binary point. So this is the result of the addition, and this is multiplied by 2 to the negative 1. So that is what the final result will equal. But now we need to convert it back to floating point. So Recall that in floating point form, we always have to normalize this result. Fortunately, in this specific case, it's already been normalized. Otherwise, we would have to shift the binary point around and maybe change the exponent here. But in this case, all we have to do is convert this back to floating point. So let's look at what we would store in our 32-bit floating point number. The sign is still positive, so we have a zero. The exponent is negative one, which of course, if we bias it, we'll get back the original biased exponent of y, which was zero, and then six ones, and a zero. And now we put in the significant of our result. So this one is implicit. We start taking bits from here. And we need 23 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, except there's a 1 after that. So that would round up, turning this to a 0, to round up, turning this to a 0, which would then round to this position, turning this to a 1. So here we have 23 bits, and we need to interpret this as a decimal number to see what the result is. Now that process is something you can do on your own, I recommend using a computer. It is rather tedious, and there is some precision to be accounted for, but you should find that the result comes out to be 0 0.7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then depending on um, where you round or whether you round or not, you'll either get a 5 here or if you're using double precision floating point numbers, which, by the way, have 64 bits to work with, you'll have a 4 and a 7 and then some other digits here. But this is not this. They're not the same. And the reason they're not the same is because of these small rounding errors that accumulated, even though the decimal version would be easy to add, the binary version had infinite repeating fractions that rose uh, and caused some problems in our calculations.